All right, macromolecules. So let's just jump right in and look at what questions we need to be thinking about as we watch this video. And so I'll be jumping uh, back and forth between uh, the slides and looking at some of these questions. Okay, so what, uh, what supplies the genetic material to all living things? Um, what are proteins composed of? Uh, where is glycogen stored? Uh, the equation for uh, nucleotide composition of DNA, as well as uh, knowing the four uh, nitrogenous bases of RNA, as well as DNA. So this question is for RNA. Um, is what we want to focus on. Okay, so before we get into anything more, we'll look at uh, monomers, polymers. So, but first, uh, organisms are made up of four types of organic macromolecules. And so those macromolecules are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. But before we uh, get into the carbs, uh, we want to know that monomers are smaller molecules that serve as building blocks for larger molecules, while polymers are made up of multiple monomers, monomers oh, sorry, that are joined together. Okay, so if we look at carbohydrates, we got six, six things here that we want to work, work on. Uh, carbohydrates are sugars or starches that contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, glucose is an example of a carbohydrate. Monosaccharides, <coughs> excuse me, monosaccharides are carbohydrates composed of simple sugar ring monomers. When two monosaccharides undergo dehydration synthesis, they will form a disaccharide. Polysaccharides, on the other hand, are made of long, repeated strands of monomers that can be linear or branched. Polysaccharides that are composed of glucose include cellulose, starch, and glycogen. In a carbohydrate monosaccharide, such as glucose, there are twice as many hydrogen atoms as carbon and oxygen atoms. So with glucose, we can see that it is made of six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. Uh, glucose is a really common one, so it might be worth just committing that one to memory. Um, glycogen is stored in the liver and muscle tissue as a form of energy. Glycogen is a polysaccharide containing glucose molecules. So I think we have a glycogen question. And glycogen does show up quite a bit. And yeah, you can see that on the fourth bullet point. Where is glycogen stored? And again, our answer there was in the liver. Plants store energy in the form of starch. Starch is formed from the glucose polymers amylose and amylopectin, which can be broken down into glucose. Cellulose is found in the structural material of plants, but is not digestible. Steroids are hydrophobic, which means they don't deserve, dissolve in water. Steroids include cholesterol and sex hormones, such as testosterone, that are made from cholesterol. Okay, so that's carbohydrates. So we'll jump into proteins now. Proteins are composed of amino acids which contain an amino group, a hydrogen molecule, and an R group. Okay, so uh, that does relate to a question. Um, protein, the second bullet point there, proteins are composed of blank, and we certainly need to know that proteins are composed of amino acids. That will probably be referenced in at least one question. It's a big part of proteins there. Are amino acids. Amino acids are linked by a peptide bond that forms with the removal of a water molecule from the carboxyl add amino groups. When multiple amino acids are linked by the peptide bonds, they form a polypeptide chain, often referred to as the protein's primary structure. Enzymes speed up the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy, which is energy required for reaction to take place. Enzymes are formed by joining two amino acids. Enzymes are globular proteins. 
Okay, so that's really all we got to know for proteins. We get into lipids. So lipids contain long chains of hydrocarbon. What does that mean? Hydrocarbon chains are just long strands of hydrogen and carbon atoms. Fatty acids are long strands of hydrocarbons and are used for long-term energy storage in the form of triglycerides. There are three main categories of lipids in the body, which is triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids. Uh, triglycerides contain three fatty acid chains bound to a glycerol molecule. These fatty acid chains can be saturated or unsaturated. As far as what that actually means, if every carbon molecule is bound to two hydrogens, then it is saturated. While unsaturated means that some carbon molecules in the chain are bound to one hydrogen and double bounded to the adjacent carbon. For phospholipids, we need to know that they make up the membrane of every cell. They contain two fatty acids bound to a hydrophilic phosphate group. I believe that relates to a question. There we go, third bullet point. Two fatty acids bound to a hydrophilic phosphate group is a blank. Right, and so we just read that, right? And that was phospholipids. There we go. Uh, again, to hear it one more time, phospholipids make up the membrane of every cell. They contain two fatty acids bound to a hydrophilic phosphate group. And finally, we didn't include it here in the bullet points, but steroids are hydrophobic. They don't dissolve in water. Steroids include cholesterol and sex hormones such as testosterone, that are made from cholesterol. All right, nucleic acids. Um, they supply the genetic, genetic material for all living things, all living cells. The monomer for a nucleic acid is a nucleotide, which contains a phosphate group, a five-carbon sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Again, what we wanted to hear the most there on nucleic acids is that they supply the genetic material for all living cells. As we go back to the questions, you can see that very first one. What supplies the genetic material to all living things? All right, Root should have said all living cells, and that would be nucle uh, nucleic acids. Okay, as we jump into RNA here. RNA consists of a single strand of nucleotides, while DNA has two chains, which is referred to as the double helix. DNA is found in chromosomes and stores genetic information. RNA translates the DNA into a form that can be read to create proteins. DNA has a sugar backbone of deoxyribose, while RNA has a sugar backbone of ribose. DNA and RNA both have the bases adenine, guanine, and cytosine. However, their difference is that DNA has timine while RNA has uracil. Okay, so that has to be a question, almost for sure, the differences there between DNA and RNA. Okay, so there we go right at the bottom. What are the four nitrogenous bases of RNA? Right, uh, and so remembering three of the bases are the same, and those are adenine, guanine, and cytosine, meaning that they're the same for both DNA and RNA, but RNA has uracil, while DNA has timing. Okay, so that would be our difference. And then what else we got? The equation of a plus C equals G plus T will be found in an analysis of nucleotide composition of DNA. And just again, as a reminder, uh, in that formula, A plus C equals G plus T. A is adenine, C is cytosine, G is guanine, and T is timing. Okay, and so that relates also to a question uh, that we have. And then finally, Nucleotides also function as a source of energy in the form of ATP. Okay, and then we 
jump back to our questions, right? So we have six of these. Uh, we've related back to them throughout this video. And so now really one of the best things, hit that pause button, see if you can answer all these questions on your own.